Hey everybody, it's George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. I got a quickie this week, but this is a great one. I came in from Naomi McMillan. I love when there's new questions. I've done a lot of shows, but when there's something that's a new topic or something we haven't exactly touched on, it really sparks my interest. Naomi asks, Once while working with you, you suggested I use a quiet clip, or what really is called room tone, a break between words or sentence of audio to replace breath with, so it would match the background noise that the studio is recording in. However, today I was watching a short video on a VO instructor who recommended using the amplification effect instead. He suggested selecting the breath, then selecting amplification, and decreasing it by a percentage, repeatedly if necessary, until the breath was no longer noticeable. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel one method or the other is more desirable? Would using one technique over the other have an impact on the success of one's auditions, in your opinion? This is basically about the creativity of the production. And when you do an audition, for example, you are producing the audition. You are having to decide what breaths go, what breaths stay, how loud are the breaths, are they distracting, do they match the genre, is the style of the uh, work that I'm doing or the genre require breaths? Those are the kind of questions you'll have to answer to yourself. You'll have to know the genre and understand what the acceptable stylistic choices are going to be because you can just delete the breaths completely you can reduce the breaths, or you can leave them 100% intact. You don't leave breaths 100% intact in most genres, I think. They're mostly audiobook, you know, long form narration, audiobook, pri- primarily fictional projects, things like that, where all the expression you want to leave in there, generally the breaths would stay in place. But with short form things, things where time is very tight, you only have so much time to get something out. There's not a lot of time for long breaths. Or breaths can sometimes even be distracting if you are a gasper when you breathe. Some people <gasps> take big deep breaths when they're in the middle of the read, and obviously that would be distracting. So it really depends on the kind of breath. But for those of you who are wondering what she's talking about between using amplify or matching background noise and pasting it using a quiet clip, as she called it, let me show you what she's talking about. So if I record some audio in Twisted Wave here, you'll see there's areas in the middle where I've taken a deep breath. And that's where I'm going to look at removing or reducing the breath. I'll either remove the breath completely by using silence. I can remove the breath by using amplify and turning down the breath. Or I can remove the breath completely using a room tone section. So to get the room tone, let's roll a little room tone at the end here. Okay, now that I've got that sample, you'll see there's a few sections, obviously, where I took a breath. You'll see there's areas in the wave here. There's a breath there. There's a breath there. I, I took a big gasping breath there, okay? So in some cases, you may just want to simply silence the breath. Now, here's why silencing a breath by itself can be dangerous. If your room tone is too hot and you just silence the breath, the room tone also is removed during that section of audio, thereby leaving a pregnant gap of just ambience in the room. It just doesn't sound natural. Will you notice it in speakers? No. Will you notice it in headphones? Probably, and sometimes absolutely. So that's why I don't recommend the silencing technique. Now, the amplify technique is good if you want to keep that gap where the breath was for timing to make it feel natural, and you want to keep the breath for the expression of the breath, but the breath maybe is too loud. By using silence, I can remove the breath by using amplify. Now, that's a breath I would probably remove completely because it's a breath in the middle of a phrase. By using silence, I can remove the breath by... So I'd probably actually, in that case, delete that breath because I like to remove that gap because it's the middle of a phrase. By using silence, I can remove the breath by using amplify and turning down the breath. Or I can remove, check out this breath over here, the breath. I'll either remove the breath, moving or reducing the breath. I'll either remove the breath. Now that's a breath that has a natural, you know, there's a natural pause between two sentences. It makes sense for there to be a breath, but maybe the breath's too strong. I'll take that breath, and then using F for amplify, I'll reduce it, maybe by 6 dB at first. I'll usually start with 6, and then if I want to remove it some more or reduce it some more, I can. Sing the breath. I'll either remove the still too loud to me, so let me reduce it some more. 
or reducing the breath. I'll either remove the breath completely, so the breath's still there, the natural sound of the breath is there, the, the gap where the breath was there, but the breath just isn't so dramatic and loud in the breath. I'll either remove the breath completely. But the other technique, if you want to remove a breath and keep the room tone, is a technique called special paste, where I can select some of my room tone, copy it, and you want to select room tone that's at least three or four seconds long, longer than the longest breath or section you'd want to replace. Then go into edit, special paste options and make sure I have it set to special pasting will replace with no fading and attenuation all the way at negative infinity. Now I've got that room tone in my clipboard because I copied it command C and whenever there's a breath that I want to remove completely but still maintain room tone I can select that range of audio and command Y it replaces that section with room tone reducing the breath. I'll either remove the breath. So that works beautifully. Um, it really works well. And so if, you, if you're doing short form things, uh, things where breaths are really not too desirable, or you've got little mouth noises and big gasping breaths in between phrases, that technique is a fantastic way to eliminate them really, really quickly with Twisted Wave. Other applications probably have a similar process. I just know it best in Twisted Wave, and it's very, very easy to do. Thanks again for your question, Naomi. It was really appreciated. If you have a question for a future Widom's World, send it in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com. Maybe you have an idea for a product review, or maybe you have a tip of your own you'd like to share. I'd love to hear that one, too. If you have tech support needs, go to vostudiotech.com. And if you have just a question about our education department or getting production or anything else, call us at 212-868-3343. This is George, reporting for Widom's World, and I'll see you guys next time.